Hi, I'm Anil Chavla. I'm the founder and CEO of Archive Social. In this brief video, we'll explore why archiving social media is harder than archiving other forms of data such as emails and files. We'll compare and contrast a variety of different approaches organizations have tried to tackle this issue. And finally, we'll identify and discuss the four most important factors to consider when selecting a social media archiving solution. To start, let's talk about why it is hard to archive social media. Unlike emails and files, social media communications are not stored within your IT infrastructure. In fact, a social media communication might never pass through your IT network. Instead, social media is transmitted through the cloud using mobile devices, and the data ultimately resides with third parties, such as Facebook and Twitter. So in order to even begin archiving social media, you have to first go out and get the data. And because social media is so dynamic and interactive with all the photos, videos, and links, you have to ensure you're capturing this data in a frequent and comprehensive manner in order to keep up with all of the conversations. Furthermore, unlike email, none of the social media data formats are standardized. For example, a Twitter tweet is very different from a Facebook photo, which is very different from a YouTube video. In order to archive social media, you have to deal with all of these different data formats and keep up with them as they continue to change over time. Now, if you are able to get your hands around this data and deal with all of these changing data formats, there are some additional challenges. Social media tends to be extremely decentralized, and it can be very difficult to manage all of the different social networking profiles across your entire organization in a single centralized manner for records management. And finally, because of the high volume of communications and the heterogeneous nature of the data, it can be virtually impossible to search your social media and find that needle in the haystack. So by now, you might be convinced that this is a hard problem, so let's talk about how you can tackle it. We'll review a variety of approaches organizations have tried in order to archive their social media. We'll start with the most basic and move to the more sophisticated, and along the way we'll compare and contrast and identify gaps and issues to consider when archiving your social media. But first, let's talk about what not to do. Some organizations have adopted a philosophy of one-way social media. And frankly, this is counter to the purpose and nature of social media, which exists to connect you with your audience and create two-way conversation. Regardless, technically speaking, social networks generally do not allow you to turn off that two-way conversation. Facebook no longer allows you to disable comments. On Twitter, you can't prevent mentions. And generally speaking, on most networks, you can't disable private messaging. More importantly, most organizations are still relying on the social networks to retain the data for when they need it. This is extremely dangerous because the moment something is deleted from Twitter and Facebook, it's gone forever. The social networks have provided zero guarantees that your data will be available and accessible for the long term. In fact, features such as download your data and Twitter's archive are actually very misleading and only provide a small fraction of your data. These download features do not include anything that was deleted in the past, and they also, more importantly, do not include any third-party content such as the comments, mentions, and private messages that you might have received. Hence, you absolutely cannot rely on the social networks as your archive. Instead, what you might consider is this first approach of manual archiving. This involves taking screenshots or copying and pasting your communications into a document. The nice thing about manual archiving is that it doesn't cost you anything and it requires zero IT deployment. But the reality is, is that it's not actually a long-term record keeping solution. Manual archiving requires immense amount of time, and it's also something that's nearly impossible to do in a comprehensive fashion. There's no built-in system for organizing your manual archive. And most critically, the records created by manually archiving are very easy to dispute. Anybody can Photoshop and copy and paste these days, and so the records that you create by manually archiving are unlikely to hold up in a legal situation. Regardless, if you're not doing anything at all today, it's better to do something than nothing, and it's best to start with at least manually archiving. A better long-term approach is to use automated technology such as web crawling. Web crawling is technology that has existed for several years, and it works by capturing the content off of a website and following the various links on that website to capture the entire site. Inventors that provide web crawling and web archiving technology are now supporting social media by allowing you to point their solutions at websites such as twitter.com and facebook.com. The benefit of web crawling is that it's mostly automated, and it actually preserves the look and feel of your social media communications exactly as you're used to seeing them on the websites themselves. However, using web crawling to capture social media is a lot like using a hammer when what you really need is a screwdriver. 
Web crawling will capture the HTML content from these websites and will only capture the surface level information. It does not capture the actual native record from the social network. For example, when a tweet contains 140 characters, web crawling will capture those 140 characters, but it will not capture the more than 2,000 characters of metadata that are associated with the tweet. Furthermore, web crawling is cumbersome in the sense that you have to recrawl these websites in order to pick up just the new communications. This leads to duplicate content, and it's hard to do on a frequent basis because of how long it takes to recrawl a website. Most significantly, though, web crawling technology was built for static websites that utilize links. Today, social networking websites are extremely dynamic. Content magically loads as you scroll down, and comments appear in line rather than linking off to a different page. What this means is that web crawling technology struggles with social networking content, and generally speaking, can only capture a small portion of the records that you might need. This takes us to our next approach, which we call all-in-one archiving. It largely refers to email archiving vendors that are now integrating social media and instant messaging content into a single archive. The benefit of these types of solutions is that it simplifies procurement and allows you to work with just one vendor if you happen to already be archiving your email with that vendor. There's also a perceived benefit of having all of this content in one archive. There are, however, some serious trade-offs to consider. Most all-in-one vendors will convert social media content into a normalized format such as email. This data conversion leads to data loss, and in many cases, the metadata is no longer available. Furthermore, because all-in-one solutions tend to split and convert social media data such that it can be displayed in a product that was originally designed for email, it can be extremely difficult to search and reconstruct your social media conversations. What this means is that all-in-one solutions tend to simplify storage at the expense of being able to easily search and produce your records when you need them. The data conversion is a particularly troubling issue, and that's why we consider the approach of using personal backup tools to be a slightly better option. Personal backup tools refer to tools such as SocialSafe and Backupify that are extremely low cost and were designed for consumers to be able to back up their own social media. The fact that these tools capture data directly from the social network in a raw format is appealing. And these tools also happen to be extremely cheap. But as the old saying goes, you do get what you pay for. These tools tend to provide a very basic capture, often omitting important details such as high resolution photos and capturing comments that are more than 30 days old. These tools also tend to have very little context in terms of helping you make sense of your data. For example, here's a screenshot from Backupify of a Facebook wall. On this Facebook wall, there are some status updates as well as comments that appeared on these status updates. There's no way when looking at Backupify to be able to make sense of this information and to associate the comments with the correct conversation. And finally, these are backup tools and not archiving solutions, and hence they provide very little in terms of records management capabilities. The search functionality tends to be extremely basic, providing very little granularity, and it can be difficult to export content from these tools in a format that's usable. At the end of the day, the price point is extremely attractive when considering personal backup tools. But if you're, say, paying $20 for your record keeping, you have to consider how much protection are you actually affording your organization. Well, we've now seen a handful of approaches, and they each have their own drawbacks. So what critical factors might we consider when searching for an ideal social media archiving solution? It starts with frequency. Because this data exists outside of our control, we have to think about how quickly we can capture new content before it's potentially lost or deleted from the social network. We have to consider comprehensiveness. Does the solution capture both sides of the conversation? Does it capture details such as full resolution photos and the entire conversation thread? And of course, does it capture the metadata that we might need in a legal situation? Speaking of legal situations, we have to ensure authenticity. Is the data captured in an authentic fashion from the social network, in its native format without data conversion? And can these social media records potentially serve as legal evidence if needed? And last but not least, do we have the context we need? Can we make sense of these records when we need them? Can we replay the conversations as they originally appeared on the social network? After all, there's no sense in storing data if you can't easily access it and make use of it. Well, there is one more approach that satisfies these questions and requirements, and it's called social media archiving. It's what we do here at Archive Social. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. If you're interested in learning more about Archive Social, please feel free to contact us or visit our website at archivesocial.com.